Warning, this game contains mentions of death and themes of mind memory manipulation. Viewer's discretion is advised. Zagreus has been missing for a while now. She was an indoor cat, but had the tenacity of a wildcat on a mission trying to leave whenever the door was open. Cat heels and playtime just wasn't enough for the little missus. I figured she'd come running if I left out some food by the porch. Three days later, still no cat. I've tried everything I could think of. Asking around the neighborhood, putting up missing cat posters. Sadly, nothing came from my efforts. I couldn't search for her during the day since I had work keeping me occupied. There's only so many hours in an evening I could yell around the streets looking for her. There was only one place left I could think of that she might have run off to. The woods by my house, right across the street. Yeah, I've definitely caught her eyeing the birds and squirrels that ran alongside the perimeters from the front window, her teeth clicking in excitement. Yeah, I was no outdoorsy person by any means. In fact, the thought of going in there scares me. I had to find her, or at least try. The first weekend I came around, packed up some water, Zagreus's favorite treats and a compass to be safe. I wasn't sure where to even begin looking for her, so I started walking in a straight line, calling out her name every few steps. It certainly didn't take long for me to realize I was in way over my head. Why did I think this was a good idea? It was hard to find my bearings within the surrounding trees. I didn't want to admit I was lost, at least not yet. Yeah, I could only squint down my compass as the needles spun slowly. Pretty sure they weren't made to do that. Did I really bring a busted compass on my first venture out in these woods? <sighs> Figured that would just be my luck. The only thing risking my own safety was my own incompetence. I shook my head hastily. No, no, no. No time for negativity. Zagreus was out there somewhere, cold and lost and hungry. I had to keep going. Also, yes, I did name my cat after <laughs> the protagonist of Hades. God, it's been hours. I'm so lost. I don't even know why I kept searching, even after the moment I realized that. Why did I think this was a good idea? Hunger had been gnawing in my stomach for a while now, having missed breakfast and lunch altogether. The heat and humidity from the afternoon sun was unbearable, but the cooling air did nothing to soothe me. Even if I were to head home, I couldn't even pinpoint where that was. What do people even do in this situation? I knew it was baseless optimism, but running onwards was really the only thing I could think of to do. Surely I'll come across something familiar. I trudged on, my shoes carefully avoiding the tree roots intertwined across the forest floor. But in my weakened state, plus the approaching darkness, I found myself stumbling through the rough terrain. My feet hit something soft jutting out of the ground. Yeah! My hand shot out as I lost my balance, my feet clumsily trying to find purchase as I wobbled backwards, arms flapping. Poof. Cow. <coughs> uh, what? My shoe had landed smack dab in a circle of mushrooms, the brunt of it causing a wispy cloud to erupt from the cluster. I stuck my nose in my elbow to avoid breathing it in. I couldn't differentiate one tree leaf from another for the life of me, but I'm pretty sure humans aren't supposed to inhale whatever the heck this was. It smelled strongly of rotten wood and wet dirt, even as it cleared. Something shiny quickly caught my attention. Ooh, shiny! I stooped down to pick it up, gasping under my breath. It was Zagreus' collar, covering whatever the heck those mushrooms released. I looked around desperately for any signs of her. Zagreus? Zagreus! <laughs> I coughed from inhaling some of the remaining dust floating in the air. I should really steer clear from this. Pocketing Zagreus's collar, I retreated carefully until I could breathe again. Stepping back, I could still smell it. It must have stuck to my hair and clothes. Her quick once-over confirmed my suspicions with a slight cringe. A thin yet generous coating of it covered my sleeves and jeans. I leaned against a tree, dusting off my clothes in a naive attempt to get the dust and smell out to no avail. If anything, it felt like I'm breathing more of it in. What used to be a musty now turned sweet. I found myself inhaling even deeper, trying to pinpoint the smell. Cucumbers? Smell like fresh cucumbers. A tingly feeling crept up my hands and neck, pinpricks spreading across my limbs as a strange heat reached my face. I started to feel drunk and woozy. My senses were numb. It should freak me out. And yet, 
a strange comfort washed over me. And I should lie down. Right now, in fact. My legs gave out from underneath me, my body toppling over at an awkward angle. I laid there and stared and stared and stared. It was nice here. A peaceful calm. The perfect place for a nap, even. My eyes grew heavy as I swam in and out of consciousness. Yeah, a nap sounds really good about now. Oh no. Sorry this happened to you, little guy. By the will of the forest, may you rest in peace. Wait, did I already die? Huh? Wait. A human? How'd you end up all the way out here? Still breathing too. Oh, I didn't die. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't leave you here. What should I do? I woke with a jolt. It was warm, but comfortably so. I could feel the weight of a blanket on me as I tried to sit up. I couldn't. I couldn't move my body. My fingers twitched uselessly at my sides as my eyes darted around in panic. Glancing about, I could see the interior of a cabin, or at least the ceiling of one. I couldn't see much past the corner of my eyes. Where was I? How did I get here? A desperate feeling rose in my chest. I had to leave. Right now. This was wrong, wrong, wrong! It wasn't meant to be here! I could hear the crackling of a fire nearby, likely the source of warmth I had felt on waking up. I could also hear footsteps approaching. Uh, I, I will stay awake. What's the use of pretending to be- Oh, hi! I fluttered my eyelids, strained to look at the person approaching. My eyes widened as I took in their appearance, the protrusions from their forehead catching my attention. Not to mention the green skin. Is this a Beast Boy dating simulator? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The stranger didn't sense any unease as they heaved a sigh of relief. You're awake! That's good. Very, very good. How are you feeling? I blinked. Oh, sorry. Forgot about that. Here. The person held a cup to my lips. A strong, sweet smell coming from the rim. A gentle hand grabbed my chin as I opened my mouth. I couldn't even move to resist. Don't worry. It'll help you feel better. I promise. Drink up. As the liquid hit my tongue, all I could feel was a vague sense of heat. Is it making me feral? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering, like, what's, what in that mushroom and what's in this drink? Just, like, something to make me feel feral. Because typically, like, when you feel a heat rise in you in fiction, you know what it is. You, you know, you know what it is. You, 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 can't ex you can't pretend you don't know what it is. You know. <laughs> As I kept drinking, taste and texture returned. The sweetness of berries and chamomile coating my taste buds. I could even detect a hint of mint. I lifted my head. Finally, hands fisting at my side. Hands what? <laughs> As I propped myself onto the elbows. <laughs> the person kept a steady hand on my chin, careful not to pour in too much in case I choked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my mind is like completely in the gutter right now, okay? Like first I was fisting my sides and now I'm choking. <laughs> I finished every last drop, wiping my mouth with the back of my hand. I stare at my fingers, realizing I had full autonomy over my body again. Good as new. Now, how are you feeling? Better. Um, thank you. The stranger laughed. Yeah, I like the way you sound. Been ages since I talked to anyone, much less with a voice as nice as yours. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I, I kind of use my voice for my job, so thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to hear more of it, I mean, heck, uh, you can hear a lot more of me on my Patreon. Ooh, woo. <laughs> oh my god, just casually slipping in that plug over there. God, no, no. I'm not that ki I'm not the kind of creator. No. I brushed off their strange compliment. Finally look around the cabin properly. It was a simple room filled with sparse wooden furniture. Perfect for someone living alone. An open archway to the right led to what I assume was the kitchen. Across from it, a door was shut. Possibly the bathroom? Take it in, there was a common theme of knitted decorations strewn about it. Any available surface had patterned knitted tablecloths covering it. From what I could peek into the kitchen, the same could be said for the kitchen utensils. An unfinished project laid beside the bedside table where I sat. A pair of knitting needles jutting out of the pile of yarn from the small basket. As far as I could tell, it looks like the beginnings of a green scarf. The stranger was comfortable in staying silent, 
observing me as I looked around. So, with their hat off, the horns and ears were impossible to ignore. They tossed their hat onto the bed, scruffing their hair and making it even messier. Sorry, but who, what? What are you? Huh? Oh, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Hey, I'm Michael with a Y. I shook my head. No, I meant that. Uh, Michael stared at me, the left ear twitching. You look very. He snorted. Ugly, off-putting, you're cute! No! Just different. Absolutely adorable. That tongue. Yeah. Different, huh? Yeah, just being nice. Well, then explain yourself. Um, I mean, that's kind of rude, isn't it? I pinched the bridge of my nose, exhaling slowly. Um, I'm just... Sorry. It's, it's been a long day, is all. Yeah, I should be thanking you. If it helps, it's, uh... Uh, skin condition? Uh, is that what you humans call him? The way he said it didn't sound confident. <laughs> and the ears? Um, gen e -tics? Right. And I assumed a little... I waved vaguely at his horns? Antenna? Those things are just cosplay to complete the look. Yeah, totally cosplay. Yeah, yeah. Would that make a convincing argument? I squinted. Maybe. Then yeah, it's cosplay. Still doesn't explain anything. Michael huffed a nervous laugh. Listen, I'm just a guy living by himself in the woods. You don't need to worry yourself further than that, okay? Something in his tone compelled you not to question his existence anymore. He's just some guy living in the woods. Completely normal. <laughs> right, completely normal. I'm Lionel. Michael beams. Nice to meet you, Lionel. I fiddled with the blankets as Michael scooted closer from the edge of the bed. Yeah, I know already asked, but how are you feeling? Any aches? Sores? Nausea? Intrusive thoughts? Weird impulses? Fever, maybe? Uh, I don't... He places his hand on my forehead before I could react. His hands were callous, quickly retracting as he gave a thoughtful hum. You seem to be... lucid. That's a good sign. Uh, great. Yeah, I was about to comment on his strange features when they reminded me of a cat's. My cat. Oh, shoot! Sorry if this is out of nowhere, but have you seen a cat around these parts? Her name's Zagreus. She's a sweet little thing, about this big, uh, skittish, but she can approach strangers if she needs to. I pulled up my phone to show pictures of her, only to find it missing from my back pocket. Wait, where is it? I haven't... Huh? You're Zagris. I haven't seen it. Ugh. Yeah, I see. I slumped against the pillows, rubbing on my temples. She lost her collar too. Even if anyone finds her, they wouldn't be able to tell where she's from. Damn it. Michael stayed quiet, watching me from the side of the bed. You care a lot for your Zagreus. My cat? Yeah, of course. To the point where you're willing to run yourself rag this deep in the forest for a cat? You realize how far you've wandered away from the nearest town? I found you near unconscious, in an area nobody set foot in for years. My cheeks grew heated at how stupid reckless that sounds. I mean, anyone would, or something they care about, right? Michael eased up, shoulders relaxing. He rubbed his chin for a moment, as if contemplating something serious. Something they care about, huh? He finally tipped his head at me, with a smile. It's... Cool to see someone willing to go this far for a small critter. Not a lot of people come out this far. Not even people searching for their lost cats. It's been a while since I've talked to someone, so the conversation's nice too. I think. I'm starting to like you, Lionel. Uh, thanks? His smile widened, but something was off. He was showing way too much teeth, and it felt stiff. I rubbed my neck, trying to think of something else to say. Can I ask... How did I get here? Oh, like I said, found you in the woods, not too far from here. Oh, jeez, really? I knew I was tired, but I couldn't have possibly. Huh. I did step in something. Something important. Familiar pinpricks crept up my skin. Home. I need to go home. Michael stiffened as he grabbed my shoulder. Uh, never mind that. You'd fallen unconscious from heat stroke. 
heat stroke. No, that that wasn't what happened. I, I wasn't. I, I was fine up until Michael shook his head insistently, leaning close. No, 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 Firefly, you weren't fine at all. If I hadn't found you when I did, well, who knows what could have happened? There's dangerous wild animals in these woods. Bears, for example. They could have snapped you right up. Bears? No, he was right. You've always heard news of bear sightings around the neighborhood. Not to mention the many warning signs you'd seen by the roadside on your expedition in search of your cat. And to go in the woods without bringing any water. Pass you up from heat stroke of all things. How could you have been so stupid? I am being gaslit to hell here! I shook my head, brain too foggy to pick apart my thoughts. He sounded confident, so why should you doubt him? Well, if it means anything. I'm glad you were there. Michael relaxed. Head on his lap once more. He grinned at me. So am I, Lionel. Yeah, I'm definitely glad I found you. His eyes were fully hidden behind his unruly hair, but I couldn't help the feeling how intensely they were fixated onto me as he said that. The hairs on the back of my neck stood. Ah, uh, sure. Without a distraction, I've only just realized how uncomfortable I was sitting still. The blanket on me was starting to itch, just as the desperate need to get home began to rise in me again. Ah, uh, this was nice. I should really get going now. Wait! My host jumped from the bed before I could. I mean, you can't. I can't just let you wander around the woods this late. Please, stay a bit longer. But Michael- Come! He grabbed my hand and led me across the room. We stepped into the kitchen, a fragrant smell of cooked potatoes and meat hanging in the air. Two plates had been set out on a small circular table, complete with utensils and a mug of tea. Yeah, I wasn't expecting guests today, so the food is nothing fancy, but join me for dinner? He looks so hopeful. Ears drooping. You feel so bad if you had to say no. Uh, you know, uh, 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 yes, yes, I, I, dinner, yes. Michael's jaw dropped for a second before he quickly recovered. Yes, of course. Uh, here, here, come sit. I'll serve up the pie in a minute. You made pie? Man, I made the best decision of my life. God damn. Look, I don't care what happens to me after this, okay? The fact that I get a nice homemade pie is just... Mm, makes everything that is to come much more worth it. I sat as instructed, my stomach rumbling something fierce as the smell was the only thing I could focus on. Yeah, this was definitely the right choice. What was so important that you had to leave so soon? The outside world can wait. You can stay here and enjoy my company. Wait, why is his voice in my head? Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, Lionel. Huh? What's wrong? I thought the shepherd's pie was done, but I guess it needs more time in the oven. Aw. Do you need more time in my oven? Oh, Michael, yes. <laughs> oh, but if you wait around, I promise it'll be the best pie you've ever had. I promise. It's all from Mushroom Oasis. More updates coming in the future. Tell me what you think of the game. Any support or feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you for playing. But we're not done here. I guess we're just going to go ahead and check out the other choices in the meantime. So what happens if I pretend to be asleep? Like, would it be any different? I don't think so. I shut my eyes quickly, hoping they hadn't noticed. I slowed down my breathing, willing my face muscles to stay still. From beside me, someone chuckled softly. Oh, come on now, Firefly. I can sense you're weak. Ah, oh, gosh darn it! Let me see you. I fluttered my eyelids, straining to look at the person approaching. And I guess you're good to be inviting me over for dinner after, like, a little bit of exposition here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go with my instincts and say, well, they're not my instincts. They're the instincts of someone with, like, who's not so down bad, who would actually want to survive a, like, an encounter like this. So, I'm gonna say no. I'm not staying. I ignored the pleading voice in the back of my head, stealing my resolve. Strangely enough, the second I made up my mind, the faint static that fogged my thoughts cleared instantly, only replaced with the urgent need to go back home. Michael goes quiet, his grip on my hand tightening before he loosens his hold. I... I see. If that's what you want. But are you really sure? Uh, yes, it's what I meant to do. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to stay. Um, I'm gonna go with I guess it doesn't hurt to stay. Because I have a feeling this will probably lead back to the same ending as before. So let's go for this. 
Michael's jaw dropped for a second before he quickly recovered. Yeah, this is exactly the same ending. Okay, yes, it's what I'm meant to do. Don't stop me, Michael. I'm going home. His ears flatten at my words. He laughs an empty laugh, mouth twisting into a crooked grimace. Surely, surely you wouldn't mind sitting down for a quick meal. Just a bite, even. Please. His hands fist at his sides. I, I I can't, okay, like, my, my, my brain is way too down together for me to, like, take the word fisted seriously. You really have to go? <laughs> Actually, dinner sounds really, really good right now. Uh, yes, I, I do have to go. Like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stay. God, God damn it. Yes! Michael stared at me as if looking for something. Finally, he sighed in defeat. All right, I guess I can't keep you here. Not anymore. Let me lead you outside. Michael ushered me out towards the back door, swinging it open as he sidestepped to let me out. The chill breeze crept up along my arms. I turned towards him one last time. Uh, thanks again for everything. He was solid for a moment, staring past me into the trees. You're welcome. Be careful on your way back. I'm sorry. This... Not much more I can do for you. He's been nothing but gracious. It's strange for a farewell, but I was too occupied with the thoughts of returning home to care. I looked over to the woods, the shadow cast from the moonlight causing some hesitation in me. Um, do you mind giving me some directions as a head start? Michael looked at me finally, then to the horizon with a tilt of his chin. Keep heading in that direction. You'll come across a trail that'll lead you straight home. I waved at him as he shut the door. The mechanism locking shut with a click. I stood there for a moment, questioning if I had made the right decision or not. Another urgent thought compelled me to leave. This is no place for me. I have to go. It was already too late to go back, so I gathered my resolve and walked away. I walked and walked. Trees blended into one another after a while. I should have been afraid or concerned, but it felt right. The darkness that surrounded me was too comforting for me to feel in danger. I stared away from the direction Michael showed me ages ago, my feet willingly carrying my body to some place specific, some place special, the final destination. Here, the patch of mushrooms I stepped in earlier, was meant to be here. I've always meant to be here. I laid down in the cold, wet dirt and closed my eyes. Wait, what? Wait, what? I, what? What? There's not much I could do if the forest had staked its claim on you, Firefly. I wish I'd found you sooner. Sleep well, Lionel. I I'm sorry, what? So I died and that was the very first ending. Oh gosh. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. That was Mushroom Oasis. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. It's still in its demo phase. Uh, it's released uh, in this particular stage because uh, it's a submission for Yandere Jam 2023. And I'm, I'm actually really excited to see uh, where it's going to go. By the way, just as a fun fact, this was actually made by the same developers as Live Your Spirits. The elevator ghost visual novel? Like the really cute one. Yeah. But anyway, hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day and i'll be seeing you in the next video this is lionel signing off ciao